Hi, it's Ray Shaleen from Pro Shaper Sheet Metal in Charlton, Massachusetts. And what you have here is a 1933 packet Macaulay Speedster. And it's a boat tail, obviously. And it's a one-off car that was made for Alvin Macaulay, who was the president of Packet Motors for about 30 years or so. And probably in late 32, his son came up with an idea. His son was working as the head of advanced styling for Packet to make this one-off boat tail. Previously, they had made uh, 20, from 29 to 32 uh, boat tails that used the same boat tail body, but with a lot of differences in this one. And those are all, uh, I believe, Super 8, straight 8 motors. This was going to be different. It has a V12 in it, but they only made one. And there's only a few pictures of the car. We had eight pictures to make this car. And this has all been done with my students at my coach building class. Now, we've got the, the panels kind of roughed out here. They still need to be massaged and welded yet and metal finished. And we have a lot of these other panels for the fenders and stuff done that have to be welded yet. But when you're making a, a project like this or any type of metal shaping, one of the first things you have to do is you have to learn how to shrink metal. It's very difficult to make these panels without the ability to shrink metal. And shrinking metal is the big bugaboo of this craft. How do you shrink metal? Well, I'm going to answer that question. Well, here I have uh, just some common clay. It's uh, been mixed up two colors, so it's a little funny looking. It's got light and dark clay in it. So everybody's worked with clay at some point in their life. Right now, this is uh, at room temperature and it's really not that malleable. So typically what you do is you put it in your hand back and forth until your body temperature warms it up. You can take a heat gun and throw some heat in it. I use clay pretty often. It's great for prototyping out little shapes and little changes, filling holes in uh, rusted panels to, to get surfaces. And typically I use my microwave. I have an old microwave. You put it in there for a minute or so and that clay will, will soften up really nice. So everybody understands clay, the way clay works. And what I say at my classes is that sheet metal and clay are the exact same thing. Clay is easily manipulated in your fingers. You have enough strength to move it around really easy. You can take, this is a piece of 19 gauge steel, you can, uh, this one's actually 20 gauge, you can bend it pretty good and that's about all you can do with your fingers with uh, a piece of sheet metal like this. If you want to stretch it, you can't stretch it with your thumbs, but clay you can. You can easily increase the area by thinning it out by compression stretching between your thumbs like that and as you thin it out now you can make it into these shapes and now I've made like a little bowl shape just by manipulating with my fingers you can't do the same thing with the metal so that's where you need the tools and all the tools that are used in sheet metal are all nothing more than extensions of your thumb and, and finger. It allows you to manipulate the metal exactly like you can manipulate the clay. So this is the mindset you have to have is that it's really easy to add and subtract. If you want to add and subtract the clay you just kind of force it together like that and you fuse it. Well, you can do the same thing with sheet metal. Sheet metal, you have to use heat. You have to weld it on. So unlike wood, wood is not an add-subtract medium. And it's also an add-subtract medium when you can thicken it. So I can bring this back to a thickened state all by force. So it takes force to both, both thicken it, which is shrinking its surface area, and by stretching it, you increase its surface area. 
So when we do it with metal, the first thing uh, when you learn in this craft is that you can take and shrink the surface area of the panel. So if you measure this up, it's like four inches by six inches, so that would be 24 square inches. So it has a surface area currently of 24 square inches. But we can manipulate that number. If we shrink along the edge, we'll reduce the surface area, and what will happen is there'll be less square inches on this panel, but you'll create a dome shape in the middle. And that's one of the uh, techniques to make dome shapes or to make shapes is to shrink around the edge. You can also stretch the middle. So the first big step in learning how to do this craft is learning how to properly shrink and stretch. And shrink is uh, very important. Now a lot of people see this type of shrinker. Now this is the most common uh, inexpensive shrinker. This is the uh, Lancaster style shrinker stretcher but this was made uh, in, in China and sold by Harbor Freight. They actually do a really nice job, and this is a Harbor Freight stand. So if you put this in here, you can pump the pedal, and that puts about two tons of pressure. So what happens is you're putting maybe 50 or 75 pounds of pressure with your foot, and because of the leverage ratios here, you're increasing it up to about 2,000 pounds of pressure. And that allows you to shrink this edge. And a lot of people when they see this, they think, oh boy, all I need is a shrinker and I can make any shape I want. And you sort of can, but this type of Lancaster shrinker has a file interface. It kind of marks up the panel and I, I'm not too happy about all the marking on the panel. And it really has the ability only to shrink in about an inch or so. So a lot of people see these and think this is the answer. Then they find out that it really isn't the answer. So now I want to show you another way to shrink. What we have here is a trump machine, very similar to what uh, a lot of people use pull maxes instead of trumps. This is a reciprocating cycle. Uh, the pull max is a lot more user friendly as far as uh, being able to adjust the stroke and everything, but this has similar stuff, but it's not um, as easy to adjust. So this has what's called the thumbnail dies in it. And thumbnail dies, well, a lot of people see thumbnail dies and they say, oh, that's so much better than the kick shrinker. And there is also on the kick shrinker, there is also the Eckold powered machines, which are, they're very expensive. I've never used one. Everybody tells me they work really good. The bad thing of them is they make marks on the panel. And I particularly don't like the marks on the panel. These uh, will make some marking, but it generally will clean up, depends on the die. And this has the two inch dies in it. Works pretty effective. And we'll turn, just turn it on. I'm not going to show it tonight. This show tonight, this video tonight is just a quick overview of shrinking technique. So you can see that's the reciprocating action. And to get the shrinking going, you need to just pull the panel in and out, in and out real slow. Uh, on the way back, you pull out slow. And it's a pretty effective shrinker. But now I want to show you a bigger more effective shrinker. Uh, this is the Pro Shaper Power Hammer and I built this so that the class that I teach also has the ability to try out all the different techniques. This I made with four inch shrink dies. That's, that's a really big die, twice the size of that two inch. And I'm not going to show it right now. There are a couple of videos I believe on my uh, YouTube channel showing a little bit of it. But at some point we'll do a really extensive shrink uh, video. So there's the there's the motion that's done with the VFD. Got unbelievable control with the machine. And as you speed it up, that point where you hear the noise hitting, that's when the die is being thrown and will we'll shrink the metal. So we're not going to be using this tonight either. And generally I don't use this too much for my automotive stuff. Um, I like having the power hammer for architectural work and, and sculptural work, but generally for automotive work, I find that you really don't need them. 
that's probably going to be um, not well received with a lot of hammer guys, but I get results as you can see with my class. With a lot of people have no uh, training at all when they come here, no experience, and they do amazing results. And I'll show you how I uh, shrink myself most of the time and how I try to teach it at the class, which is an inexpensive way. All right, pre-cut this piece of 19 gauge steel that measures uh, 038. Uh, 19 gauge can go from 038 to 42,000. This happened to come in at 38 thou. It's got a nice uh, strength to it when you make a panel out of it. And I just free formed a radius cut on the back side and it'll kind of make like a little hood scoop on it, out of it. So that means we're going to have to shrink in here and uh, we can get most of the shape just by shrinking. So this is a technique I developed about five years ago. I went through a whole bunch of uh, iterations of these die sets and I've got it perfected pretty nicely now. What this does is very similar to a tucking tool. A tucking tool I found has a little bit of a flaw because as you bring the edge over the tucking tool will bite on the inside and leave a little divot there and I don't like anything that mocks the panel up. So this has a special coating on it. We went through about 10 different methods of coating these dies. And uh, I found this Arbor Press. They make them up in New Hampshire. And I have another one right here. You can see this one. This one was made off of a free uh, three ton press. I believe this one's a five ton. And that's a three ton. Three tons sufficient. And I, I cut it. Uh, with a cutoff wheel and put some steel in it so I got a little bit better throat. And one of the issues of stump shrinking is that you can only shrink in two or three inches. The pull max or the power ham shrinking allows you to shrink in much deeper. Well this gives you about a 10 inch uh, potential here and that's more than enough on any panel. Usually it's uh, five or six inches will do most panels. So. so what we do on this is we hold it up horizontal and we start to pull this down. It's got a nice mechanism here that will balance this out nice. And normally I would have a magic marker line here that I'll go to, but I'm going to just guesstimate here. And I'm going to go in like that. So there's my depth. I go right next to it. And these I call gathers. Tucks or gathers, but I like the word gather better. It's gathering the metal, ruffling it on the edge. It's the exact same thing as the old Coke bottle caps that had that ruffle effect. And it's real easy to do. You can dial it in really accurately. And if you're not talking, it's you know like a less than a minute job to put those gathers in. So now we've got the gathers in, and you've seen that you can see that it's pulled that end down, like that's the desired result. But now what we got to do, just like the clay, now we have to push the metal into itself. And to do that, you have to have a stump. But to do it in a stump means you have hardwood available and you have uh, uh, access to carving that stump out and everything. So I had a lot of students say, there's no way I can get a hardwood stump because we just don't have hardwood out where I live. So I came up with this idea, and I call it the shrinking facilitator. Here's one here. And this one will work with this, but we'll use the other one. I have several of them over here. And you need a good mallet. We make these really nice heavy duty mallets. I got some uh, muffs for ear protection because this will megaphone back at you, so you should have ear protection. And I got some nice shock 
proof gloves here. So the object is to start your shrinking right here. And we're going to be using this end of the hammer of the mallet. And we're going to every blow counts so we want to do them just right. Now the object is to keep that angle here somewhere in this range right here. If it's too much like this then it just goes like that and, and disappears on you. So you go through all the work and you don't get any gain. What we're trying to do is to have a steep angle like that and just like the clay the sheet metal will go like this as you hammer it down. The hammer is nothing more than a strong finger. So it, it decreases its area and thickens at the same time. So when you're hammering every blow is important and the aim of every blow is super important. So we, we hammer on both sides and to tell if we've done the job, we've done the job properly, we're going to be looking for a hard spine here. And what that spine is, is the collision of the two pieces of metal pushing together and it makes a little bunch up of the metal, but they all smooth right out. So, we'll continue here. Now, I, I want to tighten this angle up. So I tighten the angle up there and continue down the spine. And you see what we did there, we, we have this hard spine, that's what we want to look for. And now we do it again. If you get a situation where you get air underneath the panel, you'll actually get a more effective shrink. So this one has some air under it. It's doing really well. Now when you're hammering these down, you have to make sure that your angle doesn't get too steep like this because then it tips over on itself and locks itself in. They're easy to get out. There's a little technique where you kind of wedge it on a stump or even the edge of the board or something. You can knock it out. Hopefully I won't do one of those. <laughs> so you can see with just those three shrinks, the shape is starting to pop pretty good here. That one's getting a little dangerous there, so see how it's starting to tip over? So we want to make sure we don't let that get out of control. So we hammer that down. This has a rubber uh, surface on it that protects the wood. The wood is just simple construction lumber available anywhere, I believe. And it's all done with a bandsaw. You don't have to hog this out with a chainsaw or a chiseling or anything. It's modular construction. I call it the shrinking facilitator. And when you're using a mallet like this, it's a pretty hefty mallet. It has to have a lot of uh, weight to it to get the inertia to knock that uh, gather down. And 
the hammering technique is to lift the hammer and then snap it. So you try to put as little effort as possible into it. You let the weight do the work. So there's one set of shrinks. And they have to be planished out. We haven't touched anything on stretching. This is all 100% shrinking and we've got that pulled around pretty good in just one set. Now we can take another set of gathers here. We can also throw up some spontaneous gathers by hitting it right here and I'll show you that process. So it's very easy using the right techniques and inexpensive tools to shrink sheet metal. It's the big bugaboo in sheet metal uh, shaping, metal shaping. They, everybody thinks that you need this very expensive tools to be able to shrink effectively and that's just not true. So say if I hit it right here you're going to see a spontaneous gather pop up here which will allow me to shrink this edge more. That's where all the shrinking has to take place in a band here that's about an inch and a half wide. The more you shrink here, the more this volume of the panel pops up. And the sides, I call this the waterfall. If this was a scoop, hood scoop, the sides would just bend over like this. They can't do that until you get this back end the way you want it. that yet. So let's see if we can get some spontaneous gathers to happen here. And we want to do that by having air under it. We get air underneath, they'll pop up. And you can see they're popping up here a little bit. That one's getting a little dangerous there so I got to be careful over there. So you can continue just to pop that and shrink that edge as a process. And then we have a little dangerous one there. You can see that that pinched way up like that. So we're going to make sure that we don't get in trouble with that one. We'll bring that over to the flat here. doing this shrinking you have to be aware of all what's happening on that edge to make sure that you don't have any tip overs. Tip overs will give you a lot of trouble. So you can sh knock these down. I actually prefer to use a, a flat top stump to do that. I got a nice big stump here. You see that little notch in the stump? On another video I'll show you how you use that notch. So there's just a few minutes. We'll take this and put it on the floor here. And then that can be wheeled out or hammered out, whatever way you prefer. Now as I brought the sides down, it popped the back up a little bit. So we'll go over to the uh, gathering tool again.
And we'll put a couple more gathers here. Now we don't have to go in as deep as we did before because we're only concerned about shrinking that edge. That should do it. You don't need any special AK steel or anything like that. This is just generic 19 gauge cold rolled. Super malleable. Let's see if we can throw up some spontaneous gathers here. We'll put it over here a little bit. You see that gather there. And now I want to take uh, all these shrinks and just smooth these up. To get this de lumped, it's best to be done in the pullback like this. And it takes a few minutes to crush them down. When you go into the wheels, you take advantage of that relief on the edge and let you right in. Pretty much settled down now and we're going to wheel it until we get a smooth condition right there. And we're going to bump the pressure up now. We pull down on it as we're pulling out. That gives it like a little fulcrum effect there. We're still smoothing and we're stretching a little bit here. By stretching in board here, it'll actually make that come around some more. We want to confine it to just that radius there on the end. If we get up into here, we're going to be having to stretch. We're going to have to stretch a little bit in here, but not so much. Now just in a matter of a few minutes this will go from that really terrible condition of all the ruffles to a high polish. The wheel surface prints onto the metal and if you got a nicely polished top wheel it'll print that surface right on there. You can see it's turning the chrome plate right now. All those shrink gathers will all get absorbed. There might be a little residue of them. And 
and the total time to make this pot would be about 10-15 minutes to do the shrinks and 10-15 minutes to plan a shit out. Now there are other ways of doing it maybe a little bit faster, but this can be done pretty inexpensively. So, here's what we got now. Add around a little bit. And if we wanted to make this a real dolled up piece, we'll have to smooth this in here and then bring this all up to one plane and clean these radiuses up. And then you would want to probably tip this back edge to make a flange and then get it all trimmed and everything. And probably another hour or two you'd have all those details done. You want to double up the front edge and uh, that's probably high enough for a scoop. You're going to lose about a half an inch when you put the flange in. But that's what you can expect. You can pull those edges over. If you wanted to pull it over more, you would go back and shrink again, make some more gathers here and go through the whole process again and you could bring that right down. Well, there you have it. Uh, after just a few minutes, we've got a pretty good shape developing here. Another 15 minutes and we could have this fully formed. Keep this section all flat and pull that back end right over. And as you can see, it's nothing really super difficult to learn. Uh, inexpensive. Now remember, metal and clay are the same thing. If you want to be able to master this craft, Keep that in mind all the time. Metal is clay. Metal is clay.